from our last word series. That's right, we're talking about seniors. Actually, we're talking with seniors. Every few days, we're going to be posting videos of some of our graduating seniors. Uh, we've been asking them some uh, questions about their life and uh, if there was anything that they wanted to share about their story. So our first one is by uh, Sam Huller. Sam is a graduate of Oxford High School. Uh, he's, a, he's an edge student. He volunteers in K-Kids, and he's got a really sweet story to share. So let's give it up for Sam. Hey, I'm here with Sam Huller, and Sam is one of our graduates this year. And Sam, tell everybody where you go to school at, or went. Uh, I go to Oxford, or yeah, I went, because, uh, yeah, that's still weird. It does not feel like I'm done yet, but I am. So Sam, I know you, uh, I've got to know you pretty well from K-Kids, when you used to, when I used to be there, and you serve in mm -hmm. K-Kids, I think still, right? You've served with them yeah. this school year. Uh, so I got to know you pretty well, but other students might not know you too much, so would you do us a favor and... Tell us some of your story. Yeah, so I was born in Philadelphia, but we lived there only about a year and a half, so I don't remember any of it. And we've lived here in Oxford ever since uh, in the same house. Uh, I've always liked playing soccer. I played all the way through high school this last year. Um, and it's been through soccer that I've had one of my biggest challenges. I've had, so I've dislocated my kneecap three times. So meaning like the kneecap was on the side of my leg instead of like right in front where it's supposed to be. Oh gosh, that's yeah. awful. Yeah, uh, and so the third time I had to have surgery for it, My that was the December in my sophomore year of high school. And the soccer wasn't the same after that. And it helped me realize that like playing soccer or like wasn't who I am, but just something I did. Okay. Um, and so we'd go, when we were younger, we'd go to the Lake Orion Methodist Church. We probably would go maybe once a month, uh, and we started going to Kensington back when it was at the high school still, but we still were only going there probably once or twice a month just because, or at least we'd say it's because like we had soccer and it was always hard to go, but I think we just weren't as drawn to go back then. And it wasn't until okay. I got to high school that we really were making an effort to go every week. Um, Cause before then, before that, to me, it didn't. It wasn't really something that I felt was my own, and that I was just going because it's what we had to do, and it's because my family had always gone. And near the start of freshman year, I was just in my room one night, and just thinking like, like this is what I want to do. I want to make this my own thing. So after that, I tried to start making more of an effort to like be intentional with going to church and like living faithfully. In the summer of 2018 is when I started serving in. K kids. So I started off just uh, volunteering. Like they had the, it was the one they had the fill in the gap thing. So I started oh, off yeah. just by signing up for like a week or two. And I ended up signing for like every week the rest of the summer. I think I was there. I had third grade boys and girls and then for a whole year. So I had all the second and third graders, boys and girls myself this last uh, year at the 1230 service. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, and other than that, I'm going to Michigan State in the fall. Hope, or I am now. They just said, just found out two days ago that we are still going to be going there. It's going to look a lot different, Sweet. but at least we get to go. Important question. Um, we know that living out our faith publicly can be difficult sometimes, uh, yeah. especially in high school. So what do you think was the mo was the hardest part about living out your faith as a high schooler? For me, I think the hardest part has been not being afraid to admit or acknowledge that I go to church and believe in God. Mm -hmm. I remember specifically during my sophomore year, we were hanging out at a friend's house in the afternoon, uh, Sunday afternoon, watching football. He had the premium package, so we got all the channels. We were watching a bunch of different games. And uh, I just remember having to leave to go home to get ready for Edge and being too embarrassed to admit that I was going to church. I made something up about how to go home and do homework or something like that uh, just because I was afraid of what they would think if I told them yeah. I was going to church. Uh, and eventually I just got to a point where I realized I shouldn't be doing that and I didn't want to be doing that anymore. And got to a point where I felt okay telling my friends that I couldn't do something because I was going to church. And even got to a point where I felt comfortable asking some of them to go to Edge sometimes or even just talking to them about the Bible. In fact, last night I was just, we were playing Xbox and about one in the morning, one of my friends said something about like being in heaven and uh, then we started talking about the book of Revelation. Uh, 
one in the morning while playing some Fortnite. <laughs> that's awesome. That, yeah. <laughs> that's some that's some good quality evangelism right there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, I think that's that's huge, Sam, because I think that's that's something that every student and honestly every adult struggles with sometimes. Um, maybe either because of fear, we're afraid of what mm. people will say. Um, or maybe people have a bad connotation of Christianity and we're like, man, I just don't want to offend them or I don't want to make yeah, them upset or exactly. think less of me. Um, but I, at the same time, like you talking about your transition and how you've grown in that and how you've moving past that, what, it, what that has allowed you to do is give hope to other people. And um, actually that challenges me because I'm like, when I think that, you know, I think like, oh, I don't want to step on any toes. Yeah, Um, they may not know what Christianity is, or they may have a a wrong view of it. So you speaking up and you sharing how you are like, they're already your friend. So in some sense, you're getting to show them what real Jesus looks like. Yeah, and and not the Jesus that they only know a piece of. Yeah, I remember, I remember hearing somewhere, I remember where it was, it may have actually been an edge that for some people, like you're the closest thing they ever may experience like to God or Jesus or Christianity. Yeah, uh, that's true. What has changed the most in your life and, and when it comes to following Jesus? Well, what has that done to you? In my life, I think it's yeah. definitely been getting or like having a much more positive outlook and attitude, uh, specifically worrying a lot less about little things that mm-hmm. really are insignificant in the big picture. Uh, and what's really helped me with that, and one of the things that's helped me with that is it's Matthew... 6 25 through 34 the just a really good passage about not worrying about things uh specifically two verses i really like in that one is verse 27 it's which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to your life and the other being 34 which is uh therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow uh will be anxious about itself and especially that last one it's really helped me uh just like worry about today and that like taking things one day at a time. Yeah. These last, these last two months were a very good example of that. And I think it's awesome that you brought in this piece of something that Jesus has said Mm -hmm. and how it's, it's coming true. Because I think even me, like I think of that, I hear, don't be afraid, don't be anxious. But I think you're like, I got to plan this thing. I got to do this thing. We don't really know what's going to happen. Yeah. (laughs) We, We don't, we think it could, but doesn't mean that it will. Um, so we shouldn't give so much time to worry. So what would you what would you say to underclassmen right now who are who are who are coming into high school? So I'd say like to an, an eighth grader who's going to be a ninth grader or uh-huh. a tenth grader who's going to hit the dreaded junior year. Like what would you say to them? I would say kind of connecting to the last thing about not worrying. Just don't sweat the little things. There's so much. I remember I used to you know start of high school. There's so many little things I'd worry about, whether it be like turning in an essay on time or doing good on a test or playing good in a game that like my, a soccer game later that day. Um, <clears throat> and excuse me, <clears throat> uh, just clearing my throat. Uh, no, no hashtag no COVID. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, but there would just be so many little things that I'd worry about and it just consume my time, me worrying about them and, in the end, they always ended up working out. Uh, and that's just something I started to realize that, uh, like, they, so, like, well, it feels like an essay. Like, it always, no matter how late I started working on it, it always get done. And uh, and that it wasn't really worth making a big deal and worrying about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, another question. Throughout your four years as a high schooler, who has made the most impact in your life? I think everyone probably could agree that their parents have had a big impact on them or their just siblings, but I think a lot of people have had impacts on me, whether it be like my friends or just people at church. Uh, but I think I think overall the biggest impact on me, like not just been a single person, but has been this all the little kids I'd see every weekend serving at K Kids. Uh, just like they, cause they have, they have a way of putting such big like ideas or like universal truths in such simple ways that it's really, it can be really hard to do for like an older person. And yeah, like I, it's, it's kind of a cliche line, but I feel like there'd be times where I feel like when I'd be supposed to teaching them, supposed to be teaching them, they'd be teaching me. It's like different, 
like just how to see things in a simpler way. Being able to spend time with these kids, like I've learned just how, like how simpler they see the world and how that's helped me be able to see some big, complicated, complex issues in much simpler ways. And also spending all this time with them, I've really seen that, like, or I've, I've learned that I want to become a teacher and that it's something I want to do for the rest of my life. Mm. So that's what I'm going to be going to do, or that's what I'm going to school for in the fall. And I think that's, that's great that you have stepped into, you stepped into it to serve, right? There was a need mm. and you met it. But in meeting that need, you discovered purpose. You know, I think that's one of the reasons we're always um, inviting students to serving projects and, and trying out new areas of, of helping other people because there may be things that we are good at and we're wired for that we don't know because we haven't tried yet. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a pretty awesome thing. So tell me, what, uh, what's one of your most favorite memories at Edge or something that will always stick out to you? My absolute favorite memory was... Definitely this last fall during the road rally, um, the group <laughs> I was with, we had, there was probably at least 10 of us. Uh, yeah. And we, all 10 of us, or however many of us, over 10, fit into a single bathroom stall in the Lake Orion Kroger. Uh, ah, ah. <clears throat> and I remember there was guys sitting, like, ever, everyone was standing, no one was sitting on the floor. I mean, there wouldn't be room to sit in a single stall with that many people, but we got about 10 people together and we took a picture of all of them dabbing, just random people we saw shopping, because that was one of the challenges. Uh, and then we made a human pyramid right in the entrance. Uh, and when we finally did leave, we, were, we weren't we were escorted, like we weren't asked to leave, but we were followed out by these two managers and they stood in the doorway that we left, making sure we wouldn't come back in. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, your group, um, your group sent some really crazy pictures yeah, to us that night. Uh -huh. That was that, that was a fun night. It was, yeah, it was um, a lot of fun. When it comes to friendships uh, in high school, what advice would you give to other students? So, yeah, I would, I would tell them that a lot of your friendships are probably, they might change, they probably are, but to not worry about it and that it'll end up uh, changing for the better. Because in my life, I was when I was thinking about this question earlier, I realized that of my close friends now, probably only two or three of them I was really friends with in middle school. So the majority of my close friends now I've like met or just gotten to know better throughout high school. Yeah. Uh, and even one of my closest friends now, like I knew who he was. We had talked a little bit before, but we really didn't start like talking a bunch and hanging out until my senior year. And now we're really good friends. Um so, and I've also realized that there are quite a few people that I was friends with uh, during middle school and even through freshman year that I really just am not, like, I haven't really talked to. And I, it's not that I, I didn't, I didn't choose to be, not be friends with them anymore. And it was just, and there was no big event with any, like, I, I didn't have any big, like, friend breakups or anything. Yeah. It was just kind of, just kind of natural things that just, they just kind of, like, faded and, like, we yeah. talked less and less over time and then. It's got to a certain point where it just, I don't know, it's hard, it's hard to explain, but I think everyone's had those things happen before where it just kind of just fizzles out. And just hearing you answer all these questions, I'm, I'm seeing trend, trends. I'm seeing some threads that have been woven through. Like there's this idea of peace in the middle of anxiety, mm -hmm. um, and oh, which it can be anxiety with this, uh, or we can be super stressed out by this stuff. Um, by our, our, the work that we have to do, by our assignments that we have, but yeah. also we can be stressed out by our friendships too. Um, and one of the ways that you've been able to get past the stress of the now is to zoom out and look for a bigger picture. Yeah, because definitely. We can get so involved in like what's happening in this moment when mm -hmm. um, if we can look a little further out and realize like, hey, it is going to be okay. We are yeah. going to find friends. Uh -huh. Some friends are going to fall away. Um, but that's kind of natural. So don't sweat it as much. Like, I love that. That's, that's big, man. Yeah. That's definitely um, something I've had to like grapple with and work on these last two months now, like being that there's been so much that I wanted to do in this time that I haven't been able to do. Yeah. Uh, and just realizing that like, that's only like it, it really is just like a short time in my life and that when it's all like said and done, I'll be looking back on it like, Oh yeah, that, I wasn't really like, it wasn't great at the time, but like it's over now and it's fine now. Yeah. And that's, that's how I've thought looking back to like all the, like just like the hard times throughout my life. I, I mean, thankfully I haven't had anything like too, 
crazy. Like there's people that have gone through a lot harder than me. My biggest thing I think has been the stuff with my knees, as I was saying earlier. And it that third time around, it really sucked. Uh, I'll be honest. I was on after I like uh, it was the third time dislocating, it and I was on uh, crutches for. It was supposed to be two months, I think, or it was supposed to be six weeks. I ended up being closer to three months on crutches. And it, yeah. I don't know, have you been on crutches? Have you ever had to use crutches before? Yeah, I actually dislocated my knee the same way you did okay. when, I was, when I was a freshman. Yeah, and so you know it's not fun. No. No, crutches are not fun. They're, uh, it's fine. My brother before, he's, speaking of my brother, I don't know if you can hear the music in the background, but I think my mom no. left the house, so he's blasting music down there. <laughs> like throughout the years with my knees my friends would joke about them like uh and they they do it jokingly and i know they were doing it jokingly but part of it always stung uh yeah just because like they like for my whole junior year of high school soccer was basically like take like i was able to play still but i had knee braces on both my knees and it just it was not the same. I, I didn't like even feel like part of the team. I was like, I probably played in only half the games, and the ones I was playing in was hardly playing in, like uh, hardly any minutes. And mm-hmm. but anyways, so it just overall just was not like a great time, and I felt it was just like just sad, like for a lot of the t- that time. Um, yeah. But like looking back at it now, it's something like it. It really stunk at the time, but. I wish I was able to see that it really was only like a small period of time, like a very small part of my life and that I was going to be like fine afterwards and I'm fine now. Yeah. And like looking back at it, like I look back and think, oh yeah, that, that time really stunk, but it really doesn't like bother me now or affect me now. And then, so that's yeah. how really how I've been trying to look at this period of time, however, for how long it's been, however long it keeps going, hopefully not too much longer, but I've just been looking at it yeah. like, that whenever it is finally done, I'll look back at it and think like, okay, it's all over and done now. And it's not like a problem anymore. And like, it was hard, like it was hard at the time, but it's, it's done now. Uh, well, last question and maybe the most important. That, I, I agree. You, definitely the most important. <laughs> if, if you were, if you were bread, what kind of bread would you be? I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but from elementary until high school, my the main part of my lunch was a peanut butter sandwich. No jelly, just peanut butter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, peanut. It was, it was a peanut butter sandwich on just plain like whole wheat white bread. So I think I think that's what I have to go with. Just the uh, the uh, uh, just the plain white bread. Because I I think I'm a pretty simple guy. <laughs> well, you know that's there's nothing wrong with that. No, I I liked it. I, people always thought I was crazy, but I liked it. But Sam, thank you for giving some advice. Thank you for taking some of your time. Uh, we're super proud of you. Yeah, thanks for having me. We're grateful for you. We're grateful for who you are. Um, and I know that your future is super bright, and we can't wait to see what's going on. Thank you. It. So, all right, keep shining, Jesus, man. And uh, we'll, we'll see you later. All right, see ya. Cool.